All right, so today we are going to be taking soil samples from one of our tubes in the ground projects. This project is a continuation of something we found last year that was really interesting. Last year we tried a number of different species of cover crops to see if any of them would have a positive influence on soils that had a low pH. Our thinking was that the soils that had a low pH, um, if we could get some roots down there through them, then maybe the corn would follow those roots down and it would do a better job uh, making it through a root restrictive low pH layer. What we found is that all of the treatments that had annual ryegrass actually increased the pH of the soil. So in the next iteration, in this, this year that we're sampling right now, we made a couple of different uh, changes. We have three different pH treatments. So I have one that's very similar to what we did the first year, where I have layers of sequentially lower and lower pH. So at the top, we have about six, then we go 5.5, 5, 5 uh, and four. Uh, so different layers of soil that have different levels of pH that I adjusted by using elemental sulfur. During the process of mineralization, elemental sulfur gives off hydrogen ions, which decreases the pH of soil. What we're doing today is sampling the pH of these soils. So I've got these tubes with the layers at set pHs. And what I'm gonna do, it makes it so easy for sampling. I'm just gonna cut open this tube. And I, I saturated these last night so that they would be nice and wet. Roll them out. We can see tons of roots in there all the way through the soil profile. So even with this low pH environment, we know that the roots made it all the way through the, the soil. I'm just gonna kind of open this up a little bit. And I'm gonna grab the bags that I need. Pause. So we have opened up our tube here and I am going to take soil samples. I have my bags already labeled, my experiment, my treatment, and my depth, and the plot number. And the first sample is going to be between zero and 15 centimeters, which is about the top six inches. A very common sampling depth. And I'm going to take a couple of different little random samples and I'm just doing this with my hand. Um, I wanna get kind of a average of what that top six inches looks like from a sampling standpoint. So I'm taking a couple different areas. When I take this into the lab, it will be homogenized and subsampled from here. So we're trying to get something that's representative. So when we take these back to the lab, the samples will be homogenized, which, which means they're all mixed up. So um, that the sample that we take is as representative of the entire area as possible. So I wouldn't want to have just this one handful of soil in the sample that I end up measuring. So homogenization is trying to mix everything up so that um, it's as representative as possible. So now this is my 15 to 30 the mud off my hand doesn't have to be precise but um, I am taking measurements on these different samples and then my next one is 30 to 60 centimeters so kind of the second foot of soil I'm taking some from the middle where there's not as many roots and I'm taking some from the outside where I'm kind of peeling the roots off because our expectation is there's quite a bit of influence from these roots that's and that's the actual mechanism that's changing the pH um, we don't know exactly what the mechanism is. I have looked through a lot of literature to try to find something that talks about annual ryegrass increasing the pH of soils. I have not found anything that demonstrates a mechanism on that. So um, after we do a little bit more testing and make sure that what we're seeing is real, um, we're going to partner with a university who will um, work on more of the mechanistic side. Right now we're just kind of excited and interesting that that maybe annual ryegrass actually has an influence. Um, we have three different soil settings here. We have a control where we haven't changed the pH throughout the entire profile. We have our low pH setting where I did sequentially lower and lower pH using elemental sulfur to decrease the pH. And then I have another one 
where I increase the pH using ag lime, which is a very common method for increasing the pH in soils. I only put that ag lime in the top six inches or the top 15 centimeters because that's typically the depth that it gets incorporated into. One of the really exciting things about this, uh, about using annual ryegrass to potentially change the pH is that what we found was that the pH changed throughout the entire profile. And so if we have a low pH that's at a root restrictive layer of nine inches or at 12 inches, that annual ryegrass might actually be able to change that. Whereas ag lime, it's going to change the top six inches. It's going to be a slow process. Maybe some of it will work its way a little bit lower, um, but it's expensive. You have to till the ground and it's you know an additional action that you have to take. Whereas if you could plant a cover crop, maybe get some cover crop credits from some agency. You've got active roots living in the ground. And if that can also solve the challenge of um, problems with the low pH, then that's, that's an added bonus. So we are working on the next part of the project for the annual ryegrass pH change experiment. Yesterday, we went out and we took soil samples through the tubes at four different depths, 0 to 15, 15 to 30, 60 to 90, uh, sorry, 30 to 60, and 60 to 90 centimeters down. And now I am going to be processing the soil so I can do pH measurements. So I emptied the bag into this bowl. I wrote the label on my tube. tube onto my balance, zero it, tear it. I've got soil that is kind of just clumpy right now. I'm going to mix the whole thing up. I'm going to gently crumble it with my fingers. All right. All right. Now we've got a nice little crumbly soil sample and I can take my scooper and put I'm going to put about 12 grams in there. This has about 20% moisture so that will be 10 dry grams. start the next one. Once this whole tray is full of samples, I will put water in that, put it in the shaker, and then do pH and electrical conductivity measurements after that. Putting them on the shaker, water sideways so the soil doesn't just sit on the bottom while it's in the shaker. I've got a real handy, I can set to a specific time, speed, and time. So I've got it set for 15 minutes at 300 RPMs, it's ramping up its speed here. One of the ways that soil scientists assess texture is by using all of their senses. So first we can look at it. There's lots of different ways to visually inspect a soil to assess the texture. Texture is the relative percentage of sand, silt, and clay. A big part of what we do is we feel it. You can also smell it. You can't really smell differences in texture. But the most sensitive part of our body for assessing the texture of something is actually our mouth. So one of my professors taught us that the best way to assess soil texture is to taste it. Okay, so now we have the moment of truth. As a scientist, uh, as an early scientist, I was told that that moment when you get analysis results back is like opening presents at Christmas. And after a year of these tubes being in the ground and all the work and effort and energy and anticipation of these, I, I really feel like that's true. So right now we have uh, measured and shaken the soil so that we can take pH measurements on everything. And this treatment right here is with the annual ryegrass with the low pH treatment. And so I have my, my pH probe. It's sitting in DI water. Give it just a little dab. Put the probe in so that it is completely submerged but not sitting in the bottom of the soil. 
and I look at the pH. It's the most exciting Christmas present I've ever had. And our pH is at 5.7, and in the control it was at 5.3, so that's almost a half a pH point higher, which does make me very happy. Um, I'm also checking electrical conductivity just to have the measurement because all I have to do is push one button and then I've got it. So I have only taken measurements on one replication of each of the treatments so far. I can't say anything much, but it does look like the pattern that we saw from our last set of experiments has a chance of holding true. So I just have to keep measuring and wait until I can run the statistics to see if there's actually uh, this phenomenon of the annual ryegrass increasing the pH like we saw last year. We are moving right along in our pH uh, soil analysis here. I have this set of uh, soil treatments was a control, which means I did not adjust the pH in any way. This one did have annual ryegrass growing in it. I also have controls where I didn't change the pH and I had no plant growing in it. So that's a different set of, of controls. But this one is a control that I had, a control soil setting that I had annual ryegrass in. The native soil pH was 5.8, and so we're going to see if the annual ryegrass increased or decreased the soil pH from that native soil that had not, did not have any amendment added. Just dab the bottom of my pH probe, put it in, hold it still so it's not on the bottom, and that is at 6.5. So it does look like the annual ryegrass in this control soil increased the soil pH. So we have lots more samples to do before we can say anything, but all the data is pointing in the right direction. Okay, so we are taking a pH sample. Mm, no, All right, we have the water and the soil added to our tubes. Put a lid on it, give it three good shakes. It's not because it does anything. One of the things that soil scientists always use when they are assessing the soil is all of their senses. So we feel things, we smell things, and we also taste them. 